began how God created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light. And the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds.
and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. the fifth day. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. Big animals. And small animals. There were spotted animals. And horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. God looked over everything and was happy. And on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. 
It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. Wow. Uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must belong to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not nah, too hokey. No, your wordle be turtle, yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea will mostly fishes be with whale and snail and lobster one and all. The orange one is goldfish, cod the ice cold fish, tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrall. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not Hopper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit, for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. <sighs> there were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person. So God created woman. <coughs> what? Hello. Uh, hello. 
I mean, uh, hi. I, I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden. The Garden of Eden. It's really nice here. You'll see. These are my friends. This is Monkey, and this is Dog. And this is, um... I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like... Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it. And I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. <laughs> and so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh. You startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit. Isn't it? You can eat it, you know. Eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. <laughs> We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well, then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. 
God probably won't even notice. And this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. I don't know, it was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief, I'm naked. <gasps> Yikes, I'm naked too. <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh-oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh-oh. Adam, Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no! You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here. But it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad, 
But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. Many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. Faster, faster! <laughs> when will that new and better king get here? What was that? Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Oh. Old stale bread. Oh. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. <laughs> what are you looking at? <clears throat> then, one day in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. <laughs> Who are you? Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of his son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph. God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary, my Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. 
It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his rule. 25, 26, 27. There are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. <sighs> I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip, 70 miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. More than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. Here, Mary. It's nice and cold. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> ah. The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me, do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought. We're here. Yes. Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh. I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it.
During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you. Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! Come over here, little guy. It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Ooh. Greetings. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Didn't I tell you to go back? All right, but you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars saw something new in the sky. I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. 
I wasn't looking where I was going. I was noticing that star. <laughs> so was I. What a coincidence. I was too. I study the stars. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah, I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the furthest east? Yoo-hoo! Wise men! <laughs> Down here! <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course! Oh, my! A sign, a sign from, God. from God? That has to be it. The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, it'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! A star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly. That star, as long as it takes, no matter how far, guiding us on to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight, shine on, shine on into the night. Lead us to our dream, the newborn king. Oh, yeah. What will we see? A palace of gold, royalty. Maybe he'll shine just like the star. wise men and bring us the news. So the wise men traveled far from the east. They kept following the star, never taking their eyes off it, not knowing where it would lead them. Look, the star is over Israel. We should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem. The newborn king must be there. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already. 
And it better be good, or I'll have you locked up. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the king. So, send them in. <laughs> they say they've come to see the newborn king. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors and hurry. Advisors! Advisors! Get in here! Yes, Your Majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king. I am the king. We mean the other one. <laughs> what other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king, except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay, if you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean... Maybe you should go find him. Yes. See what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Oh. Enough of that. When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way! Come on, everyone! Come see the newborn king! And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. <gasps> We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> Praise be to God. 
Hooray for the new king! Praise be to God! Hooray for the new king! The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world. A long time ago, there were many, many people on the earth. And everyone did whatever they wanted to without love for each other. They cared more about themselves than they did about other people. God was very sad because everyone had forgotten his way. Everyone, that is, except for Noah and his family. Noah and his family worked very hard, and they kept all of God's ways in their hearts. All right, that's enough for today. You boys can finish that tomorrow. Uh, uh, but Father, we almost had it. Just a few more minutes. God knows how hard you work, Japheth, my boy, and so do I. But God also wants us to keep up our strength so that we can do His work. You're right again, Father. You must be the wisest man in the world. Me? Oh, no. I might be the happiest man in the world, but the wisest? I think not. But enough talking. We'd better hurry. Ah, I think we're having your mother stew tonight. We wouldn't want it to get cold. <laughs> Noah and his family had a hard life, but they loved each other very much, and they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of those things possible. And thank you, God, for everything you've given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard, and for fields that are good for growing, and for the food on our table. Amen. 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 What's this? It sounds like we have visitors. Well, you must be hungry. Dear, will you please bring me a bit of meat and a bone from the stew? I think our friends need something to eat. All of God's creatures are important. There you go. Enjoy. Nothing like a good dinner, isn't that right? You're a good man, Noah. More? <laughs> <laughs> One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah goodnight and went to bed. But Noah didn't go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. 
You look sleepy, dear. Why don't you go to bed? Are you coming? Soon. I don't feel tired. I think I'll go out and look at the stars for a bit. Noah went out of his house for some fresh air. He had a feeling he couldn't explain. He didn't know that God was leading him outside. Ooh, what is this? Noah? God, is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. Please listen to the important things I have to say to you. Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news. Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who still has me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah. An ark. So much to do. Oh, I've got to get my boys and have them help me. Wake up! I need you to help me with a big project. Yes, I'm serious. An ark. A big, big ark. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You'll see. <laughs> this field should be big enough. Build it from fresh, sticky wood. Make it 450 feet long, 75 feet across, and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. Side, build an upper, middle, and lower deck. Hi, Father! Hi. Make an opening all the way around the arc, just below the upper deck. Yay! And last, Put a door in the side big enough for the largest animals of the earth to walk through. Next, 
bring two of every animal on the earth with you, each with a safe place on the ark. Noah and his family worked very hard. Father, we're finished! Yay! 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 We have done well, my sons. Oh. Where is this old man who says a flood is coming? to the crazy fool. My father is no fool. Only a fool would build a big silly boat in the middle of his field. <laughs> now let's take a good look at... <gasps> <gasps> you really are a crazy old man. Anyone who would do this... You would be wise to listen to what I say. God has told me that a terrible flood is coming. So much to do, so little time. Father? It's fair to warn them, Shem. Warn us about what? The flood that's never coming? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Let's leave this crazy old man alone. There, there now. Thank you for helping us. I guess we made ourselves some friends, eh? <laughs> And it looks like we have our first passengers. Now, if I can only figure out how we're going to find all the rest of the animals. Shh, quiet now, you two. Can't you see he's trying to think? Father, look! It's a miracle! And it was a miracle. God had done something wonderful. He'd brought two of every animal to the ark. And they were on their very best behavior. Even the lions lay down with the lambs. Tigers? Wildebeests? <laughs> Zebras? Whoa! <laughs> God will protect us all. Well, that does it. Everybody's here. What do we do now, Father? We wait for the rain. It doesn't look like we'll have to wait long, Father. Look! Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. Noah, the time has come to take your family and the animals onto the ark. Soon the rain will start. Let's go! Everybody on? All clear down here. Ready. I'll close the door.
Don't be afraid, my dear. God will protect us all. The rain covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains disappeared underwater. Except for the animals and people on the ark, there was nothing else left. During their long trip, Noah and his family became very close with the animals. They were all good friends. watched to see when the rain would stop, but it just kept coming down. It rained and rained like it would never stop. It rained for a month, then another week. Then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Noah was so excited, he called a family meeting. I've called you all here because I have a surprise for you. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful. <laughs> True. When do we get off? Well, I think if all goes well, the ground should start to peek through in about another, oh, six months or so. Everybody was disappointed to hear this news because although they all loved one another, they were all pretty tired of being on that ark. But they waited patiently. Many months passed.
Well, what did you see? What did you see? Same as always, uh... nothing but sea. We're never going to get off this boat. How are we even going to know if the land is dry? How are we even going to know if we're anywhere near land? This is hopeless. Now what kind of talk is that? Are you the same men who helped me build God's Ark? Hasn't he looked out for us this long? Of course, Father is right. But can we at least try to find out if there's any dry land? This got Noah thinking. Finally, he got an idea. He went and got one of the ravens and brought him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. He thought if the raven found land, he might bring something back with him. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything with him. So Noah decided he would try letting a dove go. Good luck! <laughs> but the dove returned with nothing as well. Aww. But Noah knew God wouldn't abandon them. He waited a while longer, then one last time, he sent out the dove again. <laughs> this time, when the dove returned, it brought something back. In its mouth, it carried a branch from an olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. We must be very close to dry land. Yes, son. If you believe in God, he will save us all. And you protected Yay! us too. And sure enough, very soon, the ark landed on top of a tall mountain. When it was safe to come out, God spoke to Noah again. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you will always know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. Something to remind you of my promise. And so Noah and his family thanked God for all he had done for them. And Noah's sons had many, many good and strong children who loved God very much. Do you know how the world began? How God created it by hand? From mighty mountains to the raging sea To every leaf on every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look It's a story for you
Long ago and far away in the city of Jerusalem, a very special visitor came to town. His name was Jesus. He arrived on a beautiful Sunday in spring. What's happening? Where's everyone going? Haven't you heard? It's him! He's here! He's finally here! Oh! Who's here? The king! Come on! The king? Come on, let's go! There he is! There's Jesus! Where? Not that fellow on the donkey colt. The king? On a donkey? He should be riding a golden chariot pulled by mighty horses. Are you sure he's a king? He looks so ordinary, like one of us. He may not look special, but did you hear what he's done? He's done the most amazing things to help people. Even when Jesus is very busy, he takes time to bless children. There was a beggar who had been blind all his life. Jesus touched him, and you know what happened? The blind man could see. And that's not all. I heard Jesus went to a wedding, and there wasn't enough wine. So he took barrels of water and turned them into wine. Water into wine? That's nothing. I heard he knows how to walk on water. Oh, oh, he's such a wonderful, wonderful man. nice man. Make way! Make way! Oh. Come on, donkey. There's a good donkey. Come on! Good thinking, Andrew. Which way do you want to go, Jesus? Let's go to the temple. I'm excited to get back to my father's house of prayer. To the temple! Come on! This way! <sighs> it's been a busy morning. The temple will be quiet and peaceful. No, it's okay. It's okay. The people don't care. You can bring the donkey in the temple with you. Ah! 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 You said this was a place of worship. Well, the more money you spend, the better the blessing. This should be a house of prayer to honor God, not to make money. But look, it's like an animal farm in here. This bird is well dropped. Stove dropped. Look, look, that's much too look high. At the oh. Leave here, all of you. Now. Come, let's go. Not everyone was happy to see Jesus. Some priests in the temple were very jealous that everyone liked Jesus more than they liked them. They didn't believe that he was the king. You're always telling us about this wonderful place called heaven. But how do we get into heaven? Trust in God and trust in me. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive people when they do wrong. If people are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. If someone needs help, Will you people please stop pushing? We all want to hear what Jesus has to say. It's all right, Peter. Someone touched me. Who was it? There are so many people here. How could I know? Who was it? Who touched me? I did. 
I have been sick for many years. I wanted to touch you and be healed. Now you are better and can go in peace. Oh, thank you. From watching what I do and listening to what I say, you can learn how to enter into heaven. Love everyone, rich or poor. Most of all, I want you to learn to love your enemies. Hmm. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, was confused. He had followed Jesus for a long time, but he still didn't understand how to love everyone. He was also confused because he liked having money, and he always wanted more. I know I dropped it here somewhere. Excuse me, I've lost some money. Have you seen my coin? Does it have your name on it? One day, Judas decided to do something bad. Do you want to know where you can find Jesus? Yes. Who are you? I'm one of his disciples, Judas. I can show you where he stays for a price. Yes, take us to him. He's causing us too much trouble. The people like him more than us now. We must stop him. What will you give me if I tell you where he is? How's this? 30 pieces of silver. Don't worry. No one will know what you've done. All right. It's a deal. I'll come back soon and lead you to Jesus. That night, Jesus invited his closest followers, the disciples, to a special dinner. Hello, welcome, Peter and Andrew, and you too, James, John, Philip and Bartholomew. Hello, Thomas, Matthew, and James. Nice to see you, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. <sighs> what a long, hot day. I'm tired. Oh, me too. And my feet are filthy from those dirty streets. <sighs> I could sure use a bath. I know. Let's get a servant to wash our feet for us. Good idea. Jesus, do you know of a servant who can take care of us? Certainly. <gasps> hey, what are you doing? I'm washing your feet. Lift, please. But, but I didn't want you to do that. I wanted a servant to do it. You're too important, too powerful to kneel before me and wash my feet. Please, Peter, it's okay. I want to do this. And me too? And you, John, may I? And so Jesus himself, their Lord and teacher, went around the table with a large bowl of water. He washed everyone's feet until they were all clean. Even though I'm your Lord, I'm also your servant. I want to take care of you. And I want you to take care of others, too. Hmm. Now listen to me. I have something very important to tell you tonight. Someone here is going to do something bad to me. Someone is going to betray my trust and love. Who? Who is it? Could it be me? Or me? Not me. Go ahead, Judas. Do what you are going to do. First, I will give thanks. We thank you, God our Father, because you give us bread to eat and wine to drink. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, I want you to remember me. The disciples didn't understand yet what Jesus was saying or why Judas had run off. They were confused, but they continued to listen. This is the last supper I'm going to have with you. 
I have to go away soon, but don't worry. We'll see each other again, I promise. And I want you to remember, always love one another as I love you. But we don't want you to go away. We want you to stay with us, always. Do you really have to go? Yes, but remember what I tell you. I'll be back. Soon we'll be together again. Is someone trying to hurt you? If so, we'll help you, won't we? My dear friends, tonight you will be afraid, but everything will be all right. But now I want to go outside and pray. Do any of you want to join me? I do. Me too. You can sure, count on I'll me, go. Jesus. Me yeah, too. Me too. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll be right by your I'll side. I'll go too. All right, then follow me. And so Jesus led 11 of his disciples outside. It was a beautiful starry night. They walked and walked until they got to a hill called the Mount of Olives. It was late and the disciples were getting tired. I want to be alone for a few minutes. You'll wait here for me and keep watch, won't you? Of course we will. We'll be right here if you need us. <sighs> That's right, you can count on us. I'm tired. Mm, me too. I know. Let's rest against these rocks and this tree. Dear Father, I know you love me and are watching over me, but sometimes I'm still afraid of what's going to happen. Please help me be strong to do what you want me to do. Thank you. Amen. But back in the city of Jerusalem... Which way is he? <laughs> Follow me. Peter? John? Where is everyone? <laughs> Sound asleep. Oh, it's you! Oh, where am I? What's going on? It's okay. It's time to wake up. Huh? What's going on? Hello, Jesus. Oh! oh. oh. <gasps> Come on! We have to protect him! It's okay. I must go. Put down your sword. This is what God wants me to do. <laughs> Following the orders of Pontius Pilate, the soldiers who carried Jesus away treated him as though he had broken the law. This was because there were some people who did not believe he was the Son of God. And so it was that Jesus died on a cross with a thief on each side of him. The disciples were very, very sad. They missed their Lord. But soon, a great surprise would happen. Some of the disciples took Jesus' body and cared for it. They brought him to a cave to be buried, as was the custom in those days. Then they put a big rock in front of the cave entrance, so no one else could get in. And finally, guards were ordered to stay in front of the cave. Two full days and nights passed.
And then on the third morning... You hear something? Yeah, what is that? Hey, what's going on around here? Huh? How is that stone moving all by itself? Look! Just then, some of Jesus' friends were on their way to visit the cave. We have everything we need, right? Perfume? Spices? I think so. Now we just need to talk to the guards. I hope they don't try to stop us. <gasps> Out of my way! <laughs> I wonder why they're running. <gasps> Do not be surprised. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. He's alive again. Go and tell all of his friends the good news. Jesus lives! <gasps> we must go tell everyone. What good news! John! Angels! It's unbelievable! He's alive! Jesus is alive again. An angel appeared before me and told me the good news. I can't believe it! What a miracle! Incredible! Risen from the dead! Praise God! I must see for myself. It's so good to see you. I have some great news. Jesus is risen. He is alive again. Mm-hmm. I know that you've been sad lately, Mary. Why don't you get some rest? No, really. Everything I say is true. Uh, thanks for the news, Mary. 
That's really great. Why don't you go on home now? Believe me, it's true. Oh, Thomas, I'll see you later. I'd have to see Jesus with my own two eyes to believe it. Wouldn't it be great, though, to walk into this house and see my teacher's familiar face again? I can almost picture it now. Jesus would be standing here, smiling at me. Ooh. Jesus? Jesus! Is, is that you? Now that Jesus is gone, we might as well fish. Are you ready with the net? Uh-huh. Come on, John. Okay. And a one, a two, a three! All right. Let's pull her back in. Pull! 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 Oh, no. Not again. We haven't caught so much as a minnow. Let's try it again, I guess. A one, a two, a... Look! Who's that over there? Throw your net on the other side of your boat. What is that going to prove? Besides, we've already tried that. We already tried that! Try again! Why should there be fish on one side of the boat and not the other? Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Come on. And a one, a two, a three! Whoa! Whoa! Pull! Pull! Look at all these fish. Just look at them. But how can that be? How did he know that? Who is that man? Some kind of miracle. A, A miracle? miracle? Jesus? It is! I can't believe it! It's him! Jesus! Jesus. Quick, everybody, pull in the nets! Pull in the nets and let's get rowing! You're back! I can't believe you're back! Yes, Peter, but only for a little while. You see, I have to go back to my father in heaven soon. Are you leaving us again? You just got back. We want you to stay. Don't be sad. You should all be happy. Rejoice! Happy? How can we be happy when you're going to leave us again? Because I died to make up for all the wrong things people have ever done. You mean you died for us? But why? Because I love you all. What do you want us to do? God wants you to be with him in everything you do. And the way to do that is to love everyone the way I love you. I'm going to make a place in heaven for you. Tell everyone you meet about me and about what I have taught you. And always remember, I will be with you forever. We'll never forget you. We will tell everyone about your love. And the disciples never did forget. They went through villages and cities in many parts of the world, telling people about Jesus and the great things he had done.
In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. Your fish looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. Hungry little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I need it to carry water. I need it to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. <laughs> Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. He only cares about eating all day and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. 
I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Oh, fear is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There. <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, Goodbye, Ophir. What? But, Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way. And I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where will you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. Ahoy, mate! Help me with this statue! Sir! Why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> Did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah. A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. 
Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the God of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a God, <laughs> it's just a rock. My God is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One God created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> Yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believed that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Poor Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this well, and I'm lost at the bottom of the sea. I was a fool. 
to run from you Now I know just what you want from me In the belly of a whale One day has gone by I promise to be true And all you ask I'll do In the belly of a whale Oh please hear my cry Never will I hide Your word will be my guide From the belly of a whale What can I do to thank you Lord What offer can I make Look in my heart And you will find My life is yours to take In the belly of a whale Two days have gone by I promise to be true After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God, I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide from, from me. Oh, yes, and I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. Children, stop. God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites.
I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired, hungry, and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead, and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah, why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh. But you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love.
It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon. But that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon. Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God. Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! a dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you. Magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O oh king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way! Forget it! Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you. But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. 
I'll not only punish the three of you, but... but... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, old king. Ariok went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Ariok. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Ariok? But God in heaven can explain all secret things. Oh, I know what your dream means. I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, believe me, it's my pleasure to come here to you shed some light I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd but I understand the dream you had last night saw a statue with a head of gold he was bronze and iron with big clay toes symbolized the kingdoms of this earth the golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king. I'm giving you the facts for all they're worth. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. That rolled on down and brought the statue to the ground it Shows that earthly kingdoms soon will pass Yeah, the interpretation is that out of all the nations God's is the kingdom that will last Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen it's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy Exactly right. You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together. Not me, sire. God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. 
but God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods, the king of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. O king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son, Belshazzar, became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party! <laughs> Magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many, meeny, tickle person. Many, meeny, tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain! Eeny, meeny, tickle Parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle, parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle, parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar. Keep your gifts, or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and he decides who will be king. You know all this, but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from his temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words. Manet, 
God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. To Kale, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. Ah, we must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him. It's me, God, Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you? Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, they must be your enemy. So we throw them into the, the lion's den. den. By the gods, uh, I, I mean by me, I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, that wasn't your plan. It was my plan. Was not. I'm much wiser than you.
Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his god, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor, and more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says no law given by the king can be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. All right. <sighs> Take Daniel to the lion's den. My dear friend, what have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your god. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your god kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths. The lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything wrong to you, O King. Daniel, I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life.
In the town of Bethany, there was a lot of celebrating. But not everyone had heard the wonderful, miraculous news. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me. What's going on? Haven't you heard? A good friend of ours has died. Really? Th then why is everyone so happy? Because he has come back to life. That's impossible. That would... <laughs> would be a miracle. I'd sooner believe that my donkey talks. Who is this man? No ordinary man, that's for sure. His name is Jesus, and he's the Son of God. We don't blame you for not believing us. We'd think the same thing if we didn't know Jesus and hadn't seen the miracles ourselves. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm Peter. And I'm Andrew. Come, sit with us. Andrew introduced Jesus to me. I liked him the very first time I met him. Peter told the traveler that a few days after meeting Jesus, they were all invited to a wedding. Even Jesus' mother Mary was there. Halfway through the party, the groom saw that the wine was almost gone. Without wine, there wouldn't be anything to drink, and the party might end early. They have no wine. Is there anything you can do to help? But it's not time to let people know who I am. Okay. Do whatever he tells you to do. Go and fill six empty jars with water. Then pour the water for all the wedding guests. I don't believe it! This is the best wine I've ever tasted! Huh? The groom didn't know where the wine came from. But Andrew and Peter knew. It was Jesus' first miracle. Mm. That could have been some trick, don't you think? No, it definitely wasn't a trick. We saw it with our own eyes. And that was just the beginning of his miracles. Like the time we were about to fish. Peter explained how Jesus was teaching a large group of people about the kingdom of God. Hello again. Please, no pushing. May I join you? Of course. Let's go out into the water. Jesus spoke to the crowd on shore for a little while longer, then said, Peter, sail out into deeper water and let's fish. <laughs> but Jesus, we fished all night and caught nothing. Maybe so, but now put your nets into the water and see what you catch. Anything you say, Jesus. Our nets are about to break! <laughs> We're going to need another boat! <laughs> this is fantastic! We have so many fish, we're going to sink! Peter, Andrew, it's time to stop fishing now. What? Come with me, and I'll teach you how to be fishers of men. So Andrew and Peter quit their jobs. They stopped fishing so they could be with Jesus and learn from him. 
After that, they met James and John, who also joined Jesus. They became Jesus' closest friends and followed him wherever he went to teach people. We were the first of his followers, his disciples. This is James and John. So the boatload of fish was another miracle. That's well, right. Yes, it was. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Jesus had a knack for fishing. I'm a pretty good fisherman myself, you know. Oh, that was just the beginning. There were so many other miracles. Oh, uh, this is Philip and Thomas. There was the time Jesus was teaching inside a friend's house. James told how the house was packed with people who had come to hear Jesus. We'll never get close enough for him to help our sick friend. Hmm, maybe there's more than one way to get inside. So remember, with faith, you can do anything. What are they doing? Away. Go away, do you hear? No, wait. Don't you see how hard they work to get their sick friend inside the house? What's going to happen? All of the bad things you have done in your life no longer matter. I forgive you of your sins. What? Jesus can't forgive this man. Everyone knows that only God can forgive someone who is bad. Who does he think he is? When I say I forgive your sins, there's no way of proving that I've really done anything. True, true. But you will see my power if I heal this man's body, too. Time to get up and walk home. Oh, Glory to God! This really is His Son! If Jesus can cure a sick man, then it's true that he can forgive sins too. Look, Jesus has healed me. And then the man and his four friends shouted for joy and sang all the way home. That sounds like a miracle. But maybe the man wasn't really sick, and he just tricked Jesus. What's this? Someone who doesn't believe Jesus' miracles? He thinks they're just tricks. A minute ago, you said you were a pretty good fisherman. Once I caught a camel fish this big. But have you ever been able to make a storm go away? <laughs> no one can do that. There was the time when all of us were sailing across a lake. I'm tired and need to rest a little while. He 
peace. Be still. Peter, why don't you have more faith? There's no reason to be frightened when I'm with you. It's a miracle. Even the wind and water obey him. I... I don't know what to say. I hardly believe my ears. If only I could see such miracles with my own eyes. I've seen them with my eyes I've seen my friend named Jesus Turn water into wine Seeing is believing Believe in what I see When you look within your heart You'll see what I mean I can almost see the miracles Right before my eyes He fills the nets of fishermen Turns water into wine he feeds the hungry, cures the lame, gives sight to the blind. When I look within my heart, miracles come alive. I believe in miracles. I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. The power of God is with us. My doubts far away If only I had seen with my own eyes Sometimes, my brother, you've got to have faith There is a man in Israel He's doing wondrous things They say he is the Son of God Jesus is his name I believe in miracles I believe in Jesus, I believe in miracles, the power of God is with us. The disciples then told about the day when Jesus was stopped by two blind men. Jesus, please, please heal us. Do you really think I can make you see again? Oh, yes. We've heard all about you. You are the true Son of God. We know you can make us see again. Then what you believe can happen, will happen. Just keep on believing. First, we could only see darkness. Now, we can see... the light of the world.
Oh, what a miracle that must have been. Please, don't stop there. The disciples then explained the more people learned about Jesus, the more they hungered for his teachings. Like the day in Galilee, when he spoke to a crowd of 5,000 people. It was a wonderful day. Almost like a big surprise picnic. Can't everyone go home now so they can get something to eat? But Peter, there is so much more I want to tell them. Philip, where can we buy enough food for all these people? It would take eight months of work to pay for all the food for a crowd this size. Jesus, I've found a boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. The boy gladly gave Jesus his food. After blessing the food, Jesus gave it to his disciples to hand out. It was just a little bit of food, but it filled every basket they had and kept filling them. And after everyone had eaten, they collected the leftovers and found that there was enough to still fill every basket. Jesus had performed another miracle but the day wasn't over yet. Right after the wonderful picnic, Jesus sent his disciples back across the lake. Don't be afraid. I'm coming to help you. Jesus, is it all right for me to come out to you? Come ahead, Peter. Oh, my. Oh, he's actually Walk on water? Uh, help me! Jesus, help me! Uh. Why did you doubt me, Peter? Oh, look, look, look! Truly, you are the Son of God. Why did you sink, Peter? Because at that moment I lost my faith. I didn't totally believe in Jesus or what he was doing, but he showed me how. Greetings, Thaddeus. Oh, for such wonderful things to happen, Jesus must truly be the Son of God. But we haven't told you about one of the greatest miracles of all. James told about the time when Jesus heard some very bad news about his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus has died. Oh, how sad. We're sorry, Jesus. Don't be, my friends. He's dead, but I'm going to bring him back to life. When I do, it will help you to believe in me. They found Lazarus' sisters waiting in front of the burial tomb. Jesus, I'm sure Lazarus wouldn't have died if you had been there. Martha, anyone who believes in me will live again, even if he has died. Do you believe that? Yes, because I believe you are God's son. Then take away this stone. God, May everyone now see that you have sent me to give life. Lazarus, come out.
Jesus must be the Son of God. Then Peter told the traveler about Jesus' most important, most wonderful miracle. It happened three days after his own death. It was on a Sunday when John and Peter went to where Jesus was buried. But he was gone. Jesus came back to life. He then visited his disciples. They first saw him down by the water. What are we supposed to do now? We should become fishermen again. What else can we do? The sea is completely empty. Yes, we fished all night and we haven't caught a thing. Hello! Have you caught any fish? Not even one! Try again! Uh, what are you saying? I don't understand fish. Throw your net over the right side of the boat. Hey, look! It's Jesus! Quick, let's row to shore! You go ahead, I can't wait! Good morning, Peter. Call to the others. Let's have fish for breakfast. In all, Jesus has been here with us for 40 days now, telling us about the kingdom of God. Oh, how wonderful. I only wish that I... Peter, there you are. Oh, hey, let's go. Nice. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. I give you my blessings. And now it is time for me to return to heaven so I can be with my Father. Now go out into the world and teach everyone you meet about me. Remember, I'll always be with you through the Holy Spirit. We must leave now, my friend. I and the others are going to Jerusalem to begin our life's work, to tell others like yourself about Jesus. Remember everything that we've told you today and believe in the miracles of Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe. created it by hand 
From mighty mountains to the raging sea To every leaf on every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. and finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow, and to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. uh, and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon. The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh. 
The dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben, Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and send him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God? Whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. 
Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, What a strange dream! Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job, this man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. 
But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things, and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me. Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. Your spies! No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar, there are only 10 of you. One brother was killed and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No, he'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. Then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. Stop! 
Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup. Oh, I don't understand. Oh, no. Good. Thief! For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, Why? No. What's he mean? Stand. Please. If Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No! No! Take me instead! No, me! Please, Great One! When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin! Joseph! It's true, I'm Joseph. Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see the eyes of your lost brother. I am so glad to have my family gathered here. It's so good to know your name. Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good.
created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Long ago, word spread throughout the land of a wonderful teacher in Jerusalem. It was Jesus, the Son of God. He helped people who were sick. and encourage those who were lonely. He answered their questions and told them about God. Jesus traveled from place to place, and wherever he went, people wanted to hear what he had to say. <laughs> you know, the angels of children are always very close to God in heaven. my baby pray for my child no go away one of Jesus's disciples was upset can't you see Jesus is too busy to waste his time on children wait my father's kingdom is made up of people who trust and love like children do to God every child is a special treasure as my disciple you should know I could never turn children away I'm sorry, Jesus. Here. Please, come back. I was wrong. Jesus will bless your children. Jesus was never too busy for anyone, young or old, sick or well. <laughs> Teacher! If you really know all the answers, tell me. How can I get into heaven? You've studied God's law. What do you think? Well, it says to love God with all my heart and mind and strength. And I should love my neighbors and other people as much as I love myself. That's right. But wait, I understand everything but that last part. Who are my neighbors? And how do I love others? So, what's your answer, Jesus? There's the story of a young man. 
he left Jerusalem on a trip to Jericho. The young man checked his money carefully, as his father had always told him to. And then began his journey. Morning. Good morning. Along the way, the man greeted other travelers, including a priest from the temple. Have a safe journey. And you also. As his journey continued, he came upon another traveler. A Levite. Levites help the priests in the temple. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Good journey to you. And to you. As time passed, the traveler saw fewer and fewer people on the road. <laughs> so I'm not alone. What a beautiful bird. I remember seeing such a bird once. Oh, Papa! Can we look at the birds? <laughs> we always do, son. Oh, Papa, don't you just love the birds? Love the birds! Love the birds! Come on, your mother sent us to buy almonds for our dinner. They live down the street from us, don't they? Yes, they're our neighbors. They're good people. Papa, look! Who's that man? Him? He's not from Jerusalem. He's from Samaria. Oh, that's a Samaritan? Stay here, son. The Samaritans are not like our neighbors. They are our enemies and can't be trusted. The boy was taught to fear anyone from a different place. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Beware of the Samaritans. The traveler was completely alone on the road when a stranger approached. He was frightened because his father had always warned him to be afraid of people from other places. But the foreigner did not bother him. <coughs> Greetings, little fellow. Here's a treat for you. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't see you. Good day, stranger. How are you? Hello. Are you from Jerusalem? Oh, that's a relief. It's good to see neighbors so far from home. Ow! You have a firm grip, friend. You haven't felt anything yet. <gasps> Grab him! W w what are you doing? Please stop!
business. We're neighbors. So give us all your money, neighbor. <laughs> Let's get out of here. The thieves took the traveler's money and jewelry, and they almost took his life. No one could hear his cries for help, so he tried to crawl back to the road. Oh, oh. I know you'd help me if you could, little friend. The poor traveler lay in the ditch for hours. Fortunate. It's the priest. He'll help me. But I'm so, so tired. The traveler needed help, but he was too weak to call out. this oh my goodness someone should help this poor man the priest passed the traveler on the opposite side of the road Where did he go? priest before him, the Levite passed on the other side of the road. What will I do? What will I do? Isn't there anyone who will help me? By late afternoon, the poor traveler had grown very weak. Hello, little friend. I'm afraid I, I won't make it through the night. Tell me, God, where are my neighbors now that I need them? 
At sunset, another traveler came down the road. Someone's coming. comes a Samaritan. Maybe he hasn't seen me. Who is it? for your cuts and scrapes. Now, this should help. I don't understand. I'm going to take you to a safe place tonight. But why? You're a Samaritan. Ah, then you have met my people before. Travelers passing by couldn't believe their eyes. A Samaritan was helping an Israelite. Don't talk. Save your strength for our journey ahead. I hope this doesn't hurt too much. The Samaritan led his donkey to a small inn. Was there an accident? Is he all right? No, we must get him inside. Of course. That man, he's alive. Yes, I, s I saw him too. But who is that with him? Why, it's a Samaritan! But a Samaritan wouldn't help an Israelite. Would he? Just rest now. All night, the Samaritan cared for the injured man. He's looking much better. I must travel on business today. Take this money and pay for anything he needs until I get back. When I return, I'll pay you for any other expenses. I...
can't thank you enough. I'll see you in a few days. I asked God where my neighbors were when I needed them. He has given me the answer. And the Samaritan did as he promised. A few days later, he took the traveler back to Jerusalem. Who is my neighbor? You are my neighbor. I can clearly see that a neighbor is a friend reaching out to me. Who is my neighbor? You are my neighbor, now we both agree That a neighbor is a friend Helping friends in need Look for a neighbor He will be the one Always standing by your side When the day is done Look for a neighbor Instead of your eyes, the neighbor you find will be a big surprise. Look for a neighbor, he will be the one. Hand in hand we go, always standing by your side when the day is done. Look for a neighbor, he will be the one, always standing by your side. So tell me, which man was the neighbor to the traveler? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Well, that's easy. The one who cared for him. As we should all do, showing kindness to everyone. So don't just love the people in your family or your friends. Love everybody, especially those in need. Live your life like the Good Samaritan. I will, Jesus. Let me help you, young neighbor. The story Jesus told that day spread throughout the world. And now, a person who helps someone in need is called a Good Samaritan.
land from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look The 12 tribes of Israel were led out of Egypt by Moses. God had promised them a home of their own, a land called Canaan. But once they got there, many Israelites were afraid of the armies of Canaan. they didn't trust God to help them win their battles. They wanted to go back to Egypt where they had been slaves. God decided that since they didn't trust him, they couldn't enter the promised land, and he had them wander the deserts for 40 years. After 40 years, God led the children of the 12 tribes back to the promised land. But instead of it being a time of joy, the Israelites were full of sadness. Their leader Moses had died, so they didn't have anyone to lead them to their new home. Boys, behave yourselves. Today we are remembering Moses. Joshua, who helped Moses for those 40 years, was remembering the great leader in his own special way. <gasps> Come to cheer me up, Turnip. <sighs> what will happen to our people now that Moses is gone? Who will guide us to the promised land? Why not you, Joshua? Turn it. You, you, you talked. It's me, Joshua. God? I've chosen you, Joshua, to lead the Israelites into the promised land. No, I can't. You helped Moses. But he was a great leader. I'm just an ordinary man, a simple servant. Don't be afraid. There is greatness in every man who has faith, Joshua. God, where is the land you promised us? Look west. What do you see? The desert floor and the Jordan River. Beyond that, foothills and green. The promised land. Take your people, Joshua. But I can't lead them. I'm frightened. Yes, you will face many dangers, but be strong. Remember, I will never leave you. Because Joshua loved God and obeyed his rules, God protected him. God's rules, known as the Ten Commandments, were written on stone tablets inside the Holy Ark. The river's very swift. Crossing won't be easy. Oh, this is foolish. <laughs> Following Joshua as if you were Moses. Are you coming, Aram? 
Come, let's see what will happen. How about there, Joshua? I'll see how deep it is. Do you think you can cross it, little one? Oh, come on, it's just a little water. No! Oh! <laughs> Who are you? Go away! <gasps> I am Joshua, leader of the Israelites. God has promised us this land. <laughs> Did he? Well, I'm the king of Jericho, and you can't enter. We are protected by this swift river and the strongest wall in the world. If you can cross this river, you better be prepared for a fight. Our God protects us, as he protected Moses, our leader. <laughs> yes, I've heard that your God parted the Red Sea, but he has no power here. Stay away from Jericho, or my army will destroy you. What do we do, Joshua? Have faith and cross the river when God tells us to. You heard Joshua. Let's tell the others. <clears throat> I'm worried about this king of Jericho. He's like the waters of this river, dangerous. Joshua. Yes, God? Don't be afraid of the king. If you trust me, I will protect you. Joshua did trust in God. He selected two men to sneak into Jericho and tell him about the king's army. One, two, three soldiers. Ah, uh, that third one is tiny. I'll only count him as half a soldier. Aram! We're spies. That means we have to be quiet. Go oh, quiet. Right. Spy! Oh, King, I I'm only a harmless traveling merchant. Liar! You're a stranger in Jericho, so I say you're a spy! Hey! Shh. But he can't do that! More spies! Israelite spies! That's being quiet! Catch them! Stop the spies! Catch the Israelites! They must be here somewhere! My name's Rahab. I want to help. This way. Under here. Quickly. Open your doors! By order of the king! Out of my way! The Israelite spies! Did you see them? They were here, but they ran toward the city gates. If you hurry, you might still catch them. The king will be very unhappy if you let them get away. Mm! 
Rahab told the Israelites it was safe to come out of their hiding place. That was a very brave thing you did. Why did you risk your life for us, two strangers? Everyone in Jericho knows the Israelites are coming to our land. We've heard that your God rules the heavens above and the earth below. He's so powerful. He parted the Red Sea for Moses. Now our men are afraid to fight you. Go, hide in the hills for three days. Then you'll be safe. God bless you, Rahab. You're very kind. Wait. I showed kindness to you. When your people attack the city, please spare my family and me. We promise, Rahab. Leave this red rope hanging from your window. It will be a sign that no one in this house is to be harmed. Joshua's spies did as Rahab had said. After hiding in the mountains for three days, they ran back to camp with their report. That's what Rahab told us, Joshua. Everyone in Jericho is afraid of us. We can defeat this king of Jericho. I'm not so sure, Aram. He had a lot of soldiers. Ah, they were all small. Let's pray to God and thank him. He has done as he said. The promised land is ours. The next day, the 12 tribes marched towards Canaan. But as God had told Joshua, entering their new homeland wasn't going to be easy. How can we cross this river safely? Please, God, give me an answer. The water's too fast. No, it's too fast. I'm not going to do this. No, no. How will we get our children and animals across? Don't be afraid. God has shown me a way. Bring out the Ark of the Covenant. Joshua directed the priests to carry the ark into the river and hold it there. The Israelites were confused. What did Joshua have in mind? This can't be safe. Joshua doesn't know what he's doing. Behold, the power of God. As the crowd watched, a miracle happened. <gasps> the priests held up the ark and God held back the waters. It's just like when Moses parted the Red Sea. It's true then. God must be with Joshua, as he was with Moses. The Israelites' faith in Joshua grew and grew, for now they knew he followed in the footsteps of Moses. Joshua, choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them to get 12 rocks from the middle of the river from where the priests stood. Carry the rocks and put them down where you stay tonight. In the future, your children will ask, what do these rocks mean? And you will say, the water stopped flowing when the Ark of the Covenant with God crossed the river. These rocks will always remind the Israelites of this.
One evening, Joshua was walking near Jericho. I followed God's commands without question. I've tried to be a good leader, but I'm not a soldier. How can I fight the king of Jericho and his army? Joshua. God, how shall the enemy be defeated? You won't need swords or armor, Joshua. Just have faith in me. To defeat the king and army of Jericho, here's what you must do. Early the next day, Joshua formed the Israelites into a long line. Remember, do as God instructed. Not a word, not a sound from any of you. First came seven priests playing ram's horns. Then the Ark of the Covenant. Then the armed men. They marched one time around the great city. Hmm, this is not fighting. <laughs> this is a parade! Well, I, I guess we won! <laughs> <laughs> When do we attack the city, Joshua? We don't. Tomorrow we march around it again. <laughs> and just like today, everyone must be quiet. No shouts of war. The only sounds can come from the ram's horns. So the Israelites marched once around Jericho. every day for six days. And for six days, nothing happened. You Israelites are fools! And the biggest fool is your leader, Joshua! <laughs> On the morning of the seventh day, Joshua's people were restless. Joshua, you do not know what you are doing. Our people are tired of marching in circles. We need a soldier for a leader. Yes, let's fight. You're right. I'm not a soldier, but I do have faith in God. He didn't let Moses down and he won't let us down so long as we trust in him. This is the seventh and last day. Who will come with me? I will. All of us. Tell everyone we will march. And march they did. But instead of going around the city just once, as they had done for six full days, Joshua said that God wanted them to march seven times. And on the seventh time around, they did something completely different. Shout! Yell! Scream! So that the heavens can hear you! Shout! For God has given us Jericho! Yes! We 
wandered through the desert sand, hoping we could find God's promised land. And now it's here before us, behind a fortress tall. But it will not be ours until we bring down the walls. Bring down the walls of Jericho. Bring down the walls. Lift your horns and blow. The sound we make is going to shake this city to the ground. We'll see the promised land when the walls come down. in God that he is with us here his power is much greater than that army over there our enemies are laughing but their kingdom soon will fall when we raise our voices we will bring down the walls bring down the walls of Jericho bring down the walls lift your horns and blow Shake the city to the ground We'll see the promised land When the walls come down So shout out loud Shout out strong That wall around the city Won't keep us out for long Sing to God One and all That land that we were promised Is right behind those walls With their voices, a few ram's horns, and their faith in God, the Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua, these are the people who helped us, Rahab, her mother and father. You're a brave woman, Rahab. God has watched over you and your family because of your faith and for helping my people. Can we stay and join you, Joshua? Nothing would make me happier. Don't touch me, Israelite. How dare you treat me this way? Why, I'm, I'm the king. You were the king. When I said God promised us this land, you laughed and called me a fool. Who's the fool now? You can't, no. no! Has anyone seen Turnip? For you. <laughs> Perfect. My friends, our days of wandering are over. We're home. After Jericho was captured, the Israelites kept moving and claimed more and more new land. Their wandering days were over, all because Joshua and the Israelites had faith in God.
created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look A long time ago, Jesus traveled the land teaching people how to be good to each other and to love God. Many people listened and learned from his stories, but some didn't understand and had questions. What are you doing, Jesus? You are sitting with sinners. How can you be a teacher sent by God if you speak to collectors. These men take our money and give it to the emperor. We've even heard you eat with these men. They have turned their backs on God. I'm sure God will have nothing to do with them. Why should you? All people are special to God. Let me tell you a story. Once there was a shepherd with a hundred sheep, but he lost one of them. Jesus told how the shepherd wanted all of his lambs safe. He looked and looked. Until one day. The shepherd had a big celebration because he had found what he had lost. But Jesus, the shepherd, was just doing his job. There's more joy in heaven over someone who was lost and then found, who changes his life for God, than over 99 people who don't need to change. Jesus then told about a woman who had 10 silver coins. But she lost one of them. When the woman discovered she had lost the one coin, she was very upset. <laughs> she spent the whole night looking for her lost coin. and they celebrated because she had found what she had lost. That's the way God feels about people. In heaven, the angels sing whenever a person says he or she believes in God and wants to live a better life. But Jesus, in your stories, the shepherd and the poor woman lost valuable things. 
And all sinners, especially tax collectors, are worthless bad people. There's another story. A story about forgiveness and love. There was once a man who was both a wealthy farmer and a loving father. <laughs> the father tried to teach them how to take care of things. Thank you, Reuben, but where is your... Ah, Benjamin. Even though his sons were very different, he loved them both the same. The father hoped they would grow up to be hard-working farmers. But as the younger son grew up, he dreamed of distant places. He didn't want to stay on his father's farm. The son decided to leave his home the very next day. Father, I had a wonderful dream last night. Really? What kind of... I was riding the finest horse in the city. Oh, the well, city's a nice place to visit, but... Everyone stared at me because I was handsome, smart, and wealthy. Yes, you are all of those. Father, farm life is fine for you. You're a farmer, but it's not for me. There are things I have to do. Places I have to see. You're leaving home? Yes. You have always promised my brother and me an inheritance. Money for us. But it's for your future. Oh, please, Father. I want my money now. I must see the world, starting today. But the father did not want his son to leave. He would miss him a great deal. Thank you, Father. I'm rich! Hey, that's not fair. Benjamin can't take his money and leave like this. <sighs> if that's what he wants, he can do it. Don't worry about the farm, Father. Reuben will be here. But I care about you. I'll miss you, my son. I'll be all right. I'm going to see the world. Wave goodbye to your brother. The father could only hope that one day he'd see his son again. No more dirty hands, no more back aches, and no more work.
Isn't it magnificent? It was the son's first time out in the world, and he wanted to buy everything he saw. Well, what do you think? Now all I need is to be seen riding a magnificent horse. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. You have bought the finest horse in my stable. Well, I deserve the best, you know. Uh, do you want that mule anymore? Nah, he reminds me of my father's farm. None of my horses are worth 40 coins. Why, this mule is worth twice that much. <laughs> the fool doesn't care how he spends his money. I see something else to buy. I don't care what it costs. I must be seen riding through the streets today. Whoa! Horsey! Whoa! Father, I've listed all of our animals. Thanks, Reuben. That was a lot of work. Uh, I was just thinking about your brother. I'm sure you miss him as much as I do. The son was still spending money. He hadn't learned his lesson yet. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. I have customers waiting. I beg your pardon, sir. How about a big fluffy pillow? The boy still only thought about himself. Ladies and gentlemen, for your dining pleasure, be Ira and his funny monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I must have that monkey! <laughs> wow! Excuse me, sir, but you have stayed here for a week. Will you pay your bill? Oh, is money all you want? Uh-oh. Out. Get out of my inn. <laughs> the 
this will pay for your bills. Benjamin was now alone and very hungry. Well, what am I going to do? For the first time in his life, the son had to beg for food. so hungry, he needed to find work, any work, but the only job he could find was the worst possible. Watch it! Don't make, well, pigs of yourselves. Oh, I'm so hungry. little pig. I've been acting so foolishly. A pigsty is fine, if you're a pig. But it's not for me. At my father's farm, everyone, even the helpers, have a place to sleep, enough to eat. Wait a minute. I'll go home. Well, father won't want me back as a son. Not after the way I treated him. But anything's better than this mess. Hey, he, he might give me a job on his farm. I'm never gonna snap my fingers like that ever again. So the son decided to go home, and he hoped that his father would not send him away. He's come back. Sir, your son is coming home. Benjamin, my son is back. <laughs> my brother is back. This is a very bad idea. My father won't even want to talk to me. Uh-oh. Too late. Is he going to be mad? Father, I'm sorry for leaving, and now I only ask to work in your fields. I shouldn't even be called your son anymore. <laughs> oh, welcome. Oh, welcome home. I'm so happy you're safe. What? Let's have a big party! Father? Uh, I don't understand. Send for food, lots of food, and get some musicians. <laughs> My son has returned home. But the older son was jealous of his brother. Whoa! Out of my way! Tell me, is the banner hanging straight? No, it's all wrong. Everything's wrong. The father welcomed his last son back home. <laughs> and the son realized how much his father loved him. Just a slave to a broken heart Till I found my father's open arms Feels so good to be home again 
No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good to be home again Feels so good to be home again My boy is back, yes it's true Set the table, prepare the food Watch me dance, lest this day So good to know he's home to stay My lost son is home again No more roaming the world like the wind I don't care where he's been My lost son is here again My lost son is home again thought my father would welcome back a boy like me Now I can hardly believe the celebration feast My lost son is home again No more roaming the world like the wind I don't care where he's been My lost son is home again Feels so good to be home again No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good to be home again My lost son is home Where's Reuben? We can't celebrate without him. Hmm. You're missing Benjamin's party. I won't go. It's not fair. Father, I stayed with you and helped you with the farm, but you never gave me a party. But as soon as my lazy brother wanders back home, he gets a feast. My son, anytime you want a party, you'll get it. Huh? I love you with all my heart. But today is something special. Your brother has returned. Like the tree we planted when you both were little. In the winter it's empty and you might think it's dead, but in the spring it comes back to life. I'm happy because I thought my son was dead, but he's alive, and now he's safe here with us. Come, celebrate with me. No! <laughs> Help! Reuben! I've been a thoughtless brother. Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> Welcome home, brother. The Father is like God. He is full of joy and forgiveness when someone decides to follow Him. No matter what we have done, who we are, God will always love us. Bah! We are not convinced. God even forgives the Pharisees. Everyone else listened as Jesus told more stories that day, and they learned how God treasures every child, every man, and every woman.
the world began, how God created it by hand, from mighty mountains to the raging sea, to every leaf on every single tree. It's in the holy book, just open up and take a look. It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon, but that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon. Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God. Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! a dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you. Magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O oh king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow? Or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? 
No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way! Forget it! Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you! But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. I'll not only punish the three of you, but... But... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, old king. Ariok went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Ariok. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Ariok? But... God in heaven can explain all secret things. Oh, I know what your dream means. I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir. With a truly holy theme Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, believe me It's my pleasure to come here to you And shed some light I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd But I understand the dream you had last night Saw a statue with a head of gold, he was bronze and iron with big clay toes Symbolize the kingdoms of this earth The golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king I'm giving you the facts for all they're worth Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word About what I've seen and what i heard It's a simple message, sir With a truly holy theme Oh, I know what your dream means Now the rock that rolls on down and brought the statue to the ground it shows that earthly kingdoms soon will pass yeah the interpretation is that out of all the nations God's is the kingdom that will last oh I know what your dream means oh I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard it's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, 
Exactly right. You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together. Not me, sire. God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. But God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods. The king of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. Oh, king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son Belshazzar became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party! <gasps> what is that? Magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many, meany, tickle person. Many, meany, tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain! Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar, keep your gifts. 
or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and he decides who will be king. You know all this, but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from his temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words. Mene, God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. Tikal, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. Ah, we must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him. It's me, God, Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you? Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, 
They must be your enemy. So we throw them into the, the lion's den. den. By the gods, uh, I mean by me, I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, it wasn't your plan. It was my plan. Was not. I'm much wiser than you. Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his God, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor, and more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says no law given by the king can be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. <sighs> Take Daniel to the lion's den. My dear friend, what have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your God. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your God kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths. The lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything wrong to you, O King. Daniel, I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life.
again how God created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. Your fish looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. <laughs> hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I need it to carry water. I need it to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. 
He only cares about eating all day and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Ophir is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait! I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure. But where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There! <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But, Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way. And I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where would you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. 
Ahoy, mate. Help me with this statue. Sure. Why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> Did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah! A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the god of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a god, <laughs> it's just a rock. My god is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One god created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! Sailors prayed to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believed that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. Bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah. Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. 
Poor Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this whale and I'm lost at the bottom of the sea I was a fool to run from you now I know just what you want from me in the belly of a whale one day has gone by I promise to be true Thank you, Lord. What offer can I make? Look in my heart, and you will find my life is yours to take. In the belly of a whale, two days have gone by. I promise to be true. After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God, I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide, hide from me. Oh, yes, and I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. So 
Children, stop. God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired. Hungry and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah. Why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh, but you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love.